In my last video, I ran an extensive study comparing mean reversion to breakout strategies. I tested two different strategies across 28 Forex pairs and using two different bar sizes or time frames. The general conclusion was that Forex pairs are much more suited to mean reversion type strategies than they are to breakout type strategies. However, what we did notice when testing the smaller of the two time frames, that was the 30 minute bars, we noticed that some of the pairs did respond to breakouts. And those pairs happened to be the yen based pairs. The top performing pairs were Euro Yen, Pound Yen and Dollar Yen. So I became curious and I wanted to dive deeper into the specific yen based pairs to see how they moved or what their behavior was around these breakouts. Specifically, I wanted to know after they broke above or below a certain level, how long that momentum lasted. I was in two minds as to whether or not I was going to make a video and share the results of this study with you, mainly because I'm not sure how useful it is, especially if you've watched my previous video. But I have put a lot of work into it for my own benefit, and the results do back up the previous study, even though we've obtained the results in a very different way. In the last study, if you've seen it, or if you haven't seen it, I used multi-charts, a backtesting and trading software. However, in this study, I used Excel, something which is available to almost everyone. In the end, what the study does is it gives us a very clear picture on the strength of breakouts across different Forex pairs. It gives us a very good idea of which ones to trade these shorter term breakouts on and which ones to completely avoid. I was originally going to use multi-charts to do this second study on like I did the first study, but I couldn't find a way of easily programming multi-charts to do exactly what I wanted it to do. And that's why I turned to Excel. So I'm going to explain how I created this Excel study, what the data shows, and why the data shows very different data to what I would have normally obtained when doing a study or an optimization in software such as multi-charts. Essentially, I wanted to know for how long this momentum lasted after prices broke out above or below certain levels using the yen based pairs which had previously shown some promising results. So firstly, I picked a simple but effective breakout level. We're going to be looking at the session high or low. So looking at a 1440 minute or a daily bar, mark the, the high and the low of that session. Now, when I say session, I'm talking about the Forex, the proper session, which is 1700 Eastern Standard, all the way through to 1659 the next day. So it's almost a 24 hour session. Once we've got the highs and the lows, on the next session immediately following, if prices break above the previous session's high, then we're going to go long. And if it breaks down below the low, we're going to go short. Then I simply wanted to measure the profit or loss on the day of entry at the end of the session. So this is gonna be less than 24 hours. So on that same session. And then at the end of each session, up to 10 sessions later or 10 days later, I didn't expect the momentum to last more than a few days. So I capped it at 10 days, but we'll see about that later when we look at the results. So it's pretty easy to understand then. The issue arose when I started to try and program this and test this using multi-charts. Let me show you why. Okay, let me demonstrate a really important difference between my Excel study and how it would normally work in multi-charts, the type of optimization which I do in multi-charts. What we have here is a 1440 minute chart of pound yen. And if we look to the left here, I've marked with some arrows one, two, three, four, five, six. All of these are breakouts. We've got breakout number one, which is here, and it's a breakout above the previous session high, okay? And then this bar here, it breaks above this high, so that was also a breakout, and so on. Now, I have a strategy programmed here on in multi-charts. You can see we've got a buy signal here, and then exit signal here. I've got it programmed to exit after four bars in the trade. So we entered it on this bar here. At the end of this day, we're gonna call that day one. End of this day is day two, three, four, and then it exits, okay? Same with this here. We've got our entry and then day one, two, three, four, and we exit. However, what we do need to notice is that even though we've got two trades within this amount of bars, Look how many breakouts we've had. We've had six breakouts, but we've only captured two. That's because once multi-charts thinks that we're already in a long trade, we ignore 
the next breakouts okay so we've ignored a lot of these breakout trades and this is why this makes this kind of study quite hard to program and look at in multi charts what we can do within a strategy in multi charts is sort of scale into the position so we could open our initial position here then we could open another position here another position here another position here etc but essentially what then multi charts does tend to do is it tends to exit at the end of the four days which is calculated from the first position so we'd enter here we'd enter here we'd enter here but then every trade would be exited here and that's not what we want we want to enter here exit here enter here exit here enter here exit here four days later on every trade and that's what i've managed to do within the excel study we can then look at the market in the most detail we can look at every single breakout compared to using a strategy in multi charts, which can ignore breakouts if we're already in the direction of that breakout. In the study, I tested three of the best pairs from the previous study. And then I wasn't originally going to do it, but out of curiosity, it was a bit of an afterthought. I decided to, let's look at the three worst pairs, which ha didn't happen to be yen pairs, by the way. I thought, let's just have a look at those to see if the Excel results match up or agree with the previous study. So let's go to Excel and look at the results from the six markets, the three best and the three worst from that previous study. We're just going to look at this one workbook within Excel, and this is essentially the summary page. For each market, I had an individual workbook with all the, the calculations and workings on. But here's where we see the summary. I'll quickly explain the numbers and what the graphs are showing. On the left-hand side here, you can see we've got three markets. We've got USD, JPY, Euro Yen, and Pound Yen. And these were the three best performers from our previous study. In fact, I'm sorry, but these aren't in order. I think the order was Euro Yen number one, Pound Yen, and then US dollar, Japanese Yen was the, the third best. However, that doesn't really matter here. And what we've got is we've got the days held, which is how many days we hold the breakout trade for. So if it breaks out and we hold for three, that's exit at the end of the day after three days and then we're breaking down between long and short trades long here is the orange short is the purple and then combined is the blue on the end so i did want to look at are there differences between long and short trades we do have an extra column here which is the cnt long which is just the trade count okay shorts trade count and the combined trade count so on the graphs the bar graph is the net profit and the line graph in green is the average trade value. And I know it's a bit small on the scale here, but on the right hand side here is the average trade value and on the left is the net profit. And that's all in pips. So looking at the first market, US dollar, Japanese yen, what can we see? Well, straight away we can see that long tends to work pretty well, short doesn't. Although short does work well if we only hold the trade for one day or that means we actually exit on the same day as where we had that short breakout. If we look at the combined results, every single one between one and 10 is profitable, but really looking at the first or second day, they are as good as any. I don't think you'd want to be holding for 10 days just to get a little bit more profit than what we could have got on the first day. Looking at the next market, Euro Yen, which I think was the best performing strategy on the last study, uh, it definitely looks quite nice here and we can see that apart from days 9 and 10 both long and short were profitable and we can see that there's quite an obvious peak isn't there around day 5 or 6 so that's when maximum profit is achieved holding up to 5 or 6 days and the last one we've got which is pound yen again both all profitable so all all hold durations between one to 10 were profitable. And looking at the combined, we can see that it's fairly stable, isn't it? Across the whole, the whole board, the peak is probably about five. So uh, yeah, you definitely wouldn't want to be holding trades longer than about five days when we're trading the pound yen. 
something we do need to look at, and I did mention this in the previous study, before we get too excited and see these results, looking at the combined, looking at the average trade, we can see that on US dollar Japanese yen, the highest average trade is only about four pips. On the others, we're looking at five and a half pips and maybe just over eight pips. And considering that, you know, normally I'd do these tests including five or six pips worth of costs because these tests are done with raw data, they're not including costs, then once we've taken the costs out, there's hardly going to be an edge at all. The strongest edge happened to be in the long only on US dollar, Japanese yen, with an average trade of just over 12 pips. So in general, looking at the long and short results combined, we can say that they all work and they're all profitable which I guess we kind of expected after seeing results from the first study. So now let's look at the worst performing pairs. And I've got these here, and these are in order, I believe. So the worst was pound New Zealand, then pound CAD, and then Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. And immediately, we don't need to go into too much detail, we can see that they're all negative. However, one thing I definitely did notice, and this seems to be consistent across each of these three pairs, look at how we get this, this peak drawdown or this peak lowest point around day four or five on pretty much all of them. And then the numbers start to incline again. Now that suggests that, now remember after day one, it's saying once we've seen a breakout, if we close the trade after day one, we'd be in a loss. And then that loss tends to get bigger and bigger and bigger until about day four or five. Now that suggests that the breakout fails immediately and then goes against us and it gets worse and worse and worse. So this position is reversing away from the breakout for the next four or five days before it then starts to turn again and go in the direction of the original breakout. So we can see that there definitely is a very strong reversal behavior. So maybe creating a strategy to fake the breakouts or you do, do the opposite. So when the markets break out to the high, take a short trade, don't go long. And the opposite, when they break down to the low side, then don't go with momentum and actually do the opposite and go long. And as I've already said, looking at the overall summary or the overall results from this Excel study does in fact agree or confirm the results we saw in the multi-chart study, which I did in the previous video. So that's what the data shows us about breakout opportunities across some different Forex pairs. The general and the key conclusion here is that not all Forex pairs move the same. Some consistently follow through after breakouts while some can immediately reverse. But by knowing which ones do which allows us to focus where the odds of success are most in our favor. Of course, what we've seen and what I've given you in this study isn't a ready-built tradable strategy, but it's a very solid foundation. Now you know which of the Forex markets are worth trying to build short-term breakout strategies around and where you'll have the best chance of success. Well, I hope you found this video both useful and interesting. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Was it worth me taking the time to make a video around the results of this observer strategy which I created? I really hope so. Anyway, thanks for staying till the end of the video. I hope to see you next time. But until then, this is Jared Goodwin and thank you.